Welcome back, folks. Today, we're going to be creating this fun birthday calendar with a pop-out. This is something you can do for a friend or as a digital product. I'm going to um, start immediately by going into my elements section and going down to the tables area. We're going to create a calendar. So I need seven columns and I'm not sure how many rows I'm going to need, but let's um, see if we can figure this out together. So I'm just going to add a few more columns. And I'll start off by typing the days of the week. And I'll start to type the days of the week. And I'm just tabbing over to get into the next cell. And I can just tab to create another row. And I'll stop at 30. Or if you need 31, you can just add a 31. Now for tables, if you want to make the table larger, you can just grab the corners and it'll resize both the columns and the rows. If you only grab it by the handles, it's only going to resize that last column and you don't want that. So uh, if you're resizing, grab it by the corner so that you keep the ratio of the table intact. I'm going to grab this row and I'm going to unbold all the days of the week. For the months, I'm just going to highlight every row. And for the font, I'm going to choose a font called Playfair display. So there it is. To make it larger, I'm just going to come here and I'm going to, you can press the plus or you can just dip in there and you can change the font to a larger size. Now, if you want to make use of as much as uh, the space around the cell. Maybe your numbers aren't fitting in there. You can always just click the spacing and you can decrease the spacing so that the numbers will fit in there better. So here is my table. And I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. And I'll just leave it like that. Now for the border color, I'm, I'm actually going to remove that. So I'm selecting the table and I'm going to come up here. I'm going to change it to white. And we'll see how that looks. And that looks perfect. For the days of the week, I think I'm going to make them a little bit larger. So I'll just come here and just make them a little bit larger like that. All right, so we're done with the table. Uh, now this table is transparent. That means if I were to change my background color, um, we would be able to see the background behind it, but our lines are now white. So if you want to have a different color, make sure that you're also changing the table grid to match the color of your background. I'm going to keep mine at white. And I'll scroll back up. I'm going to go into my recently used. Now, before I place my ripped paper on my workspace, I'm going to add another page. 
and I'll place that on my workspace. I'm going to straighten this out to 90 degrees. And I'm now going to go over to my apps section. And you know what? I racked my brains thinking about what would be the easiest way or quickest way to accomplish this design. And, and really, this is the best I could do. If you guys have a better way of doing this, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your ideas. But um, so I'm going to click in, on the apps section and I'm going to use an app called Trace to Frame. This is what it looks like right here. And essentially, what I'm going to do is I want to trace along this uh, element. Uh, now, uh, unfortunately, I'm getting this message that says graphic elements are not supported. So before we do this trace to frame thing, I'm going to go into edit. And I'm going to add a shadow. You'll see over here it says using the photo editor will turn your graphic into an image and enable all tools. So that's what we're going to do. So let's add a shadow. And I'll add a very minimal um, shadow. And we'll keep it like that. I'll close this. And now let's go back to our app, Trace to Frame. Here it is. And now you'll see, now that I've gone off the element and then selected again, we have the option to start tracing. So I'm going to click that purple button. And we're going to start tracing. And what we're going to do is we're just going to trace along the inside of that element. So I'm going to start up here. And I'm just going to very carefully trace along the edges. And if you make a mistake, you can always say undo. And just take your time doing this. Now, if you want to move points, maybe um, you're not covering um, a certain area, you can just drag those points. You're going to get to a certain point where you won't be able to see what you're doing. But if you actually click a point here, you can actually move it to see where your graphic is. So you can stretch it and then just move it. Now, you don't want to be covering too much of this white paper. torn paper because we're going to need that. So all we want to do is just cover the black area and make that our frame. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So what I, we're going to do is we're going to come down here and say add to design. So here is my ripped paper frame. So I've got a frame now. And let's see how that fits right on top. So there it is right there. I think that's pretty good actually so i'm going to copy it and i'm going to come up here to finish off what we're doing so i'll press paste and now is kind of your chance to you know place this where you want it to go do you want it to go straight do you want it to go on an angle um you know there are so many options okay so i'm going to leave it like that I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to grab my lady. I'll go into elements and this is the design that I was working with. Now I'm going to take a copy of this and I'm going to place this copy over here. For this one, I'm actually going to go to edit and I'm going to go to magic grab And I'm going to grab the lady and I'll say grab. Now, you don't have to do this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I want to add a shadow behind the lady. So we can now see that we've got the background and we've got the lady. 
So I'm going to grab the background and I'm going to drag the background into that frame. I'm going to take a copy of that frame and just layer it right on top. And I'm going to grab the lady and I'm going to add a shadow. I'm going to add a glow. And I'll just increase the intensity and the size like that. Now I'm going to grab her and I'm going to put her in the second frame that's on top here. So let me grab her and I'll put her right inside. I'm going to double click and I'm just going to rotate her so that she is standing right side up. And now is the time to position the lady where you want her to appear on your design. So I'm going to leave her like that. You can say done here or just press the white space and that will set it into that frame. Now remember, I've got two frames, one for the background and, and one for the lady. And the reason why I have two frames layered one on top of another is so that I can put that shadow on the lady. And again, you don't have to do this. You can just have one frame there and that will work just fine. For this one, this is going to be our pop out that we're going to work with. And I don't need the background, so I'm going to remove the background on this one. So I'm going to click that one and I'll click background remover. And now we're going to grab this one and we're going to place it right on top. Now you have to be careful that you don't put your cursor on top of the frame because as soon as you put your cursor on top of the frame, that image is going to want to pop in there. So if that is a problem for you, grab a shape, put a shape on top, make it transparent to prevent this other image from going inside of there but otherwise just handle it by the edge. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to try and stack it on front, except I need to bring it to the front. So let's go to position and layers. And here it is. I've, this frame is sitting on top of it, so it's not working so well. Let's grab this image and let's bring it as the top, as, as the top layer. That way when we're moving it on top, it's not going in the middle. So there is the pop out. Okay. Now we're not finished with the pop out just yet because we want to hide this um, foot inside. So it's not so that this leg is kind of popping out. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to crop the side here, but you're going to notice what's going to happen is I'm also going to crop the head out. So essentially what we need is to have a separate image for each pop out. So we're just going to duplicate this image again and we'll just layer it again on top and I'll extend this again. But this time, instead of going back in, we're going to crop the foot out, but keep the head in. You see, if I crop it going all the way up, we get to see the head. So there she is right there. If you need to move her or adjust her, just come to the position layers tab. Grab all of the elements that go with that and you can crop it or resize it to make it smaller. You can resize it to make it larger. Just make sure that you've got all those elements selected at one time. So now to finish this off, let's go to text. Let's add a heading. Let's say happy birthday. I'll bring that up here. We will add a There's a happy birthday and let's add some confetti. So here is some confetti.
and we can push that behind the frame. Let's also grab a heart. I'll grab this one and I'm just going to put that right there. I'll go to position and layers and I'm going to bring that heart behind the calendar. Now you'll notice that the calendar grid lines are still there. That's from the table. So if you don't want those grid lines in there, then what you can do is you can download the calendar first and then bring it back into Canva and remove the background. That will remove those grid lines. But instead, I'm going to just make it a little bit smaller. I'll rotate it a little bit and I'm just going to move it there. And that's pretty much it. So tell me, what did you think of this tutorial? Did you like it? Did you find it too complicated? Let me know in the comments what you thought. If there are any other tutorial requests you want to, I don't know if you can hear that, but there are some kids screaming <laughs> in behind me. It's the first day of school and um, yeah. So let me know, what did you think of this tutorial? Did you find it difficult? Did you find it easy? Is it something that you would use? Let me know in the comments. If you liked this tutorial, if you learned anything whatsoever, press that like button, subscribe, and turn that notification bell on. All right, for now, my friends, I'm going to say bye-bye until next time.